There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. Melissa Service Pack 7 is now controlling transmission. Uh-oh. Hello, everybody. This is Melissa Service Pack 7 coming to you from the car again because I am at a doctor appointment where I am not allowed to enter the building. So what better way to pass the time than to make a YouTube video? Okay, today we're going to be reviewing the TV show, excuse me, the PBS educational show from the 80s, Your Choice, Our Chance, episode titled Decisions. This is, I think, officially my favorite episode. So um, let's go over what it's about. So we have a boy named James. He's I want to say high school, but it could be junior high. I don't know. James is a drummer. He plays in a band, school band, excuse me. And he really, really likes playing the drums. He has a little brother named Warren. So anyway, he has to take care of his little brother while his mom is working. James and Warren's parents got divorced. James is not happy about the divorce because he doesn't get to see his father very much. He wants, he really wants his father to see him play his drums and see the new um, music that he's come up with. But unfortunately, James finds out that his father has to move far away, a hundred miles away to be exact to the town of Northbrook. Mom said we could get together and jam next weekend. Dad? Yeah, next weekend. I don't think so. Why not? They're phasing out my job, but I got a new one in Northbrook. It's a million miles away. It's more like a hundred. Do you have to go? As skinny as my bank account is, I think I better. But when will we see you? <sighs> Hardly ever. Dad! That's not true. I'll have to move by the end of the month. But once I get settled, I'll visit as often as I can. Hey, you two are the whole world to me. You know that. I am just dying to figure out where this episode was filmed. I have nothing at all to go on on this, and I'm usually good at figuring these things out. If you've seen me comment, you've seen that I've figured out where these things were filmed as far back as shows from the 70s. I got nothing to work with except the initials um, of the school, which is NH. JS or NJHS, whatever, and I found nothing. All I know is that I think it was filmed in Canada because they mentioned something about Canada at the beginning of it. Anyway, um, so wherever they live, the father's moving a hundred miles away and James isn't happy about it. The little brother doesn't seem to be that bothered by it. So anyway, we show James playing in the band. The teacher congratulates him, says he's doing excellent with his drumming, but his friend that plays the piano, she tells him, keep an eye on the chords. Um, and he's a little jealous about that, and he makes it known. So anyway, James ends up getting so upset about not being able to see his father, his father moving away, that it's starting to interrupt his work at school, um, especially in the band, the school band. He screws up ordering t-shirts for the band members and some of them get mad at him because the t-shirts aren't the right size. Some people didn't even get a t-shirt and he was supposed to be in charge of that. Also, James's friend, can't think of the kid's name. He has a friend that's kind of a bad influence on him. He's been skipping school and he has another friend, an older friend that drives a red. This guy, um, I don't think they ever say his name, but the guy who drives a red convertible, he pops up when James and his friend are walking to school and he says, hey, got you something. He gives him a brand new Walkman. And so, you know, James is looking at him like, wow. So, and he goes, maybe you can do me a favor next time. Hey, Andy. Got something for you. All right, nice Walkman there. Hey, just like I said, real soon you'll do me a favor, right? Sure. No problem here, James. So what, you want to get in on a good deal too? Not right now. Yeah, whatever. 
Whoa! Oh, here we go. All right. Catch you guys later. Absolutely. What's that? Looks like wine. Uh, it's more like punch. It might have a little wine in it, but I can't even taste it. You already had some? Sure. Hey, I had some beer, too. You know, it's no big deal if you take it slow. I don't know. Driving a car like that, he must be doing something, right? Okay, first of all, what does he mean by maybe you can do me a favor next time? And where is this guy getting the money for the car? Where does he get the money for the new, just be able to give away a new Walkman? Is this guy supposed to be like a drug dealer or something? Because that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Because, you know, it, it's weird that he's just giving away brand new things. And we will see, we will you hear more from this guy later on. But anyway, after he gives him a Walkman, reaches into the bag and hands him a wine cooler. I think it's a wine cooler. I don't know. I don't drink. I've never drank alcohol. So I don't know what these things are called, but it's like a bottle. And um, he, his friend tells him that you can't really taste the alcohol in it. It's like soda, I guess, whatever. But anyway, James invites his friend over to the house, comes over, He's looking at pictures of James's father on the wall. They start practicing for the school band playing the song that they're playing, which I have another question. Does anybody know the name of that song that they're playing in the band? I'm just curious. I could probably find out. I was thinking of shazamming it with my iPod, but I, I don't know. But if you guys, anybody knows it, tell me, because that would be cool to find out what the name of that song is. I don't like the song. I think it's a little annoying, but just out of curiosity, I want to know what it is. Okay, so he sees James, his friend sees him looking sad while they're looking at the pictures of the father, and he goes, here, try some. We used to play together all the time. Since he moved, we don't. Yeah, that's really tough. Yeah. Go ahead. Maybe just a little. Tastes like soda. See what I mean? It can't hurt a thing. Hey, I'm gonna go get another one for us. Okay. I feel like James's friend just totally took advantage of him being depressed and got him to drink alcohol. And I don't know, I didn't like that part. He was easily influenced because of his depression and his family situation. And I guess that's where the peer pressure comes in, you know? So anyway, he takes some of it. He's like, oh, I'll just have one sip. And then he's like, tastes like soda. <laughs> and so eventually, you know, the day goes on and everything goes okay because he only had one sip. But then uh, another day goes by and his friend shows up to practice for a band. He brings his keyboard and as he's opening the door, another guy comes in. The guy with the red convertible who gave him the alcohol and the Walkman. And the guy surprises him with a brand new drum. Now, I know drums probably cost a lot of money. Any kind of musical equipment is expensive. Um, which I gotta back up here for a second because I left something out. Um, after James came home the day that he found out that his father was moving like a hundred miles away, he starts playing the drums, taking his aggression out um, on the drum and he hits the drum so hard that the paper on the drum breaks it rips his mother comes out and says what happened and he's like oh I, I had an accident you know okay <laughs> So she tells him it's going to take a couple of months before she can get his drum repaired. And he's like, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now that leads up to why when James's friend and the guy in the red convertible show up and the guy in the red convertible gives him a new drum. James at first tells him, 
I can't accept this. It's, it's too expensive. And he goes, oh, come on. I want to hear what this sounds like. And he goes, okay. Toby here has been telling me how you're such a great drummer and all. Hmm? So... Ta -da. Ta -da. Hey, I told him you had bad luck with your old one. I thought I'd do you a favor. Maybe sometime you can do me one, right? Uh, I can't take this. It's too expensive. <laughs> Ain't nothing to it. So what, are we going to hear this thing or what? I guess. All right. All right. I find it weird how he was just, first he says no, he doesn't want it. And then all of a sudden, oh, because this guy wants to hear it, he's going to accept it now? I mean, is that like a, a, another example of peer pressure? <laughs> I, I don't know. But anyway, he hooks up the drum, he starts playing. And of course, he has the guy that gave him the drum says, maybe you can do a favor for me sometime. What favor? What does he mean by that? Is this guy shoplifting the stuff? I want to know where this guy's getting his money from to buy the stuff. He's got to be stealing it or he's selling drugs, one or the other. All right. So he is playing the drums. Everybody's playing the drums. And of course, the alcohol gets involved in because this guy brought alcohol. This guy's like a major, major bad influence on these two boys. Um, and they drink more and more alcohol. I bet you think my favorite bubbly is champagne. Well, surprise. What I really love is Sun Country Wine Cooler. It's a truly marvelous blend of real fruit juice and premium wine. As a matter of fact, it's the best tasting cooler I've ever had. So when they asked me to talk about Sun Country, naturally, I accepted. Sun Country, say, give me the real juice cooler. They told me I'd be working in fur, but... This is ridiculous. The little brother comes up and says, I want some too. And he's like, no, it's time for you to go to bed. And he's like, oh, you guys are having fun when I'm going to bed. And he's like, oh, no, I promise, you know, we won't, we won't have any fun. So James puts his brother to bed. His brother says he's cold. So he gets a blanket, puts a blanket on him. And then he takes out a space heater and turns the space heater on, walks out of the room. So, um, his little brother is rolling over in bed. I guess he gets hot and he kicks off the blanket and the blanket lands on the space heater and it catches on fire. So his brother Warren, he's like sitting in the bed yelling, James, James, James is passed out on the couch because he's drunk and his friends have left the living room's a mess or six times then he finally hears it he gets up and he goes oh my god and he makes his brother crawl up the floor he grabs a fire extinguisher sprays the fire again with a fire extinguisher excuse me there is no fire it's already been put out she sprays it again okay she goes in the living room finds a bottle of that um a wine cooler or whatever and she's not really mad she's mad but i would say she's more disappointed and she asks him what happened what's this and he goes oh i just had a few sips and you know what she says to him? She goes, zero sips are what I need from you, mister. I thought I could trust you. Where's Jane? What on earth happened? Go! Just what exactly happened? 
happened? I wish I knew. I put Warren to bed one minute. And what is this? A couple of friends came over and I only had a few sips. Zero sips is what I need from you, young man. I thought I could trust you. I'm sorry. Things got out of hand. Now, this was filmed back in the 80s. That's my time. I was a kid in the 80s. If my parents ever, ever found out that I even had one sip of alcohol, my butt would be kicked. I would be grounded. Especially if I had a little brother or sister, which I, no, I don't. I'm an only child. And I put them in danger. Oh my God. <laughs> I would, my, my mother would not say, oh, zero sips is what I need from you, Melissa. You know, should have beaten the crap out of me. So, well, I, I think that the mother totally let him off the hook. She didn't give him a good enough, she didn't even punish him, you know? And that's not going to stop him from drinking because now he knows I'm just going to get a slap on the wrist so I can do it again. Um, yeah. And so the show ends with James realizing that he made a huge mistake drinking and that he's going to have to eventually deal with this guy in the convertible again. He owes him a favor because he gave him the drum and he decides to return the drum. So the episode ends with James and Warren, his little brother, walking to the guy's house. The guy gave him the drum, knocks on the door, and the guy's like, what's up? And he goes, I'm returning this. And he says, oh, what'd you do? Break this one too? And he's like, no, I just don't want it. And James and his little brother walk off down the sidewalk, happily ever after, and it's over. <laughs> Yeah? Here's your drum. What's the matter with it? You break this one too? My brother and I don't like the way it sounds. Come on, Morton. I do realize these shows are cliffhangers. Um, this is one... Like I said, this is my favorite one in that series now. And it really wasn't that much of a cliffhanger. And that's what I like about it. Because we know what happened. James gave the drum back. Um, the bed, the blanket caught on fire. He put the fire out. Yay. We know what happened. I'm just disappointed that James was not punished by his mother. Maybe she punished him. But they just didn't show it. I don't know. But I think that it's not a really good example for children to watch that. I don't think they're going to learn enough that it's not good to be drinking alcohol. Because the mother did not punish him. That was like a very important thing that should have been addressed. Because some kids might drink. And they might not have a little brother with a blanket to catch on fire in their bedroom. You know? So, anyway. Now we're going to talk about why it's my favorite episode. But first, I want to tell you that. This episode has become a part of my nightly routine before I go to bed. Every night, I have to watch that episode on the iPad before I go to sleep. I don't know why, but it actually helps me sleep better if I watch that episode. So I'll watch it before I go to bed. And that's that. I love the house that, the, that James and Warren live in. You hear this music, it's like, doo, doo, doo. and then they show this house and it has this weird like a black design that kind of curves. I'm going to show it here. I will also link you to that particular episode so that you can watch it. Okay. Um, anyway, and then you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can see the whole thing take place. Um, I like that. And I love the end when they show James and Warren walking down the sidewalk going home. And then it just ends there. I really like that scene. After he returned the drum, 
they're walking down the street and you know everything's gonna be okay now you know i love that <laughs> i guess that's it for this review we've got i've covered everything and also oh one other thing someone commented and said that the boy that james's friend the, the guy the kid with the short curly hair that plays the piano in the band Someone had commented and said that he was on an episode of Saved by the Bell. I don't know if there was more than one episode or just one. And they had said they wished that they had casted him to be Slater instead of the real, instead of Mario Lopez, you know. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Also, on the subject of Saved by the Bell, there is another episode. I think it's called Fitting In. Same series. Okay, and the girl that played Mickey on Saved by the Bell in the very first season, she is in that episode as well. And we'll cover that episode another time because I have figured out some locations from that episode for you. Um, so yeah, this, this concludes our review of Our Chance, Our Choice, Your Chance. I always mix, I always get the name of that show wrong. Our, our, I got on the iPad right here, hold on. Um, I, it's, it's a confusing name. I mix it up, I say it backwards, I, 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 uh, I screw it up. Your chance, I'm sorry, there I go again and it's right in front of me. Our, your, <laughs> Your chance are choices! <gasps> Your choice are chance. The episode is called Decisions. I'll link you to that episode down below so you can watch it, form your own opinion, and comment below and tell me what you think. Do you like it? Did I describe it well enough? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Whatever. But I suggest you watch the episode first before you tell me you disagree with my opinion.